What's up? This is Eric July of Backwards, and you're listening to Honest Brutality. Created by the people. Created for the people. No holds barred. No punches pulled. Just honest brutality. I don't know what the fuck you guys are thinking. But you don't ever, ever, ever talk about my band again. What's this honest brutality shit anyway? Honest brutality. Willfully ignorant, the knowledge you won't get none. But don't get it twisted, I too was dumb and then some. Support a politician, sit back in that Twitter. His stars not understanding that you got shot close and drop. Hey everybody, welcome to Honest Brutality. This is Big Sloppy with Evil Irk and the Camera Rebel. And we have a super special, honored to have guest tonight. The yes, one and do. only, Eric July of Backwards. How you doing tonight, Eric? Man, I'm doing good, man. How you doing? We're doing fantastic. Yeah. Weather finally broke out here. It's looking nice finally, and we're enjoying it. How is it down there in Dallas? Right now, it's uh, it started. Get a little chilly, but you know, chilly out here, people think is you know hot as hell everywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> but it works. It works. <laughs> uh, the first time I ran across backwards was about a year ago. I was uh, checking out Alonzo Rochelle's show, The Zone Nation, okay. and he ran the uh, the video. You guys had a lyric video for Utopias Don't Exist. And I was like, oh my gosh, these guys are incredible. <laughs> this is, it wasn't like anything yeah. I'd ever heard. And it was really blunt. The lyrics in that were blunt as all get out. I'm like, yeah. oh, man, these guys, they're going a lot different than what you normally hear yeah. from a rock, metal, rap. I don't know. What do you guys, how do you describe your music? Yeah, what's the genre? Man, we, we call, we just dubbed our own kind of genre. We call it street hop because, like I you like said, it. it's not really. It's not really a whole lot out there, and we have a lot of uh, hip hop influences. But we all also, before we even started this band, we were all in hardcore and metal bands. So right. that's where you hear that from too. So we're we're kind of all over the place. I'm watching the lyric video, and you're seeing mm. some some blunt items there, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> you, you, you obviously don't hold back. You know, it's funny because that was the first. We we warmed them up with like two songs, Grindstone, right. and then we came out with Elitist. Because those were our first two songs, we 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 kind of planned it that way. We were like, "All right, we're gonna kind of warm them up." But then once this, uh, once we actually announced the album and we come out with the with the track that's gonna introduce it, we gotta let them know who we are. And that was the song, you know, uh, wrote it on the spot. It was like uh, a lot was going on uh, as far as like with the between this black community, and that was around the time when the Freddie Gray and all of that stuff was taking taking place. And I was start beginning to get frustrated with a lot of people in there. The activism being wrong, uh, being mad at the wrong people. You know what I mean? So uh, this is just how it was. You know, we just don't hold we didn't want to hold any punches because that's a representation of what the band, you know, actually stands for. And we're all about really giving it to you straight. And I think that's what sets us apart from a lot of bands, because we'll go ahead and rather than make these kind of generic kind of we're going to mask this song <laughs> in a way that you might know what we're talking about. Right. but We could also be talking about something else. That's not what we're about. We're about our, we're going to give it to you straight. It may, it's going to make you feel some kind of way, but that's what it's all about. I think that hashtag another blacks mad did the trick. Yeah. Oh man. That's exactly, <laughs> that's, that's, that's exactly what it was. It's funny. Cause that was the, like the verse that, that stuck with everybody. And that was <laughs> how it was by, design you know what i mean because it, it was like at time after time again these protests were taking place and it was just pissing me off because i'm like damn these people are not mad at the right people uh, right. a lot of this these wounds are, are self and in, self-inflicted when you consider some of these voting habits and stuff like that and and uh you know we we hold like the state and the government and their their agents we hold them to a different standard than we hold other individuals who do most of the killings in a lot of these communities and it's just it's just so frustrating so i had to throw it in the song there well you go. indeed i would like to just kind of preface the whole conversation with the fact that you are probably more well known in some circles as an activist or a political right. figure than you are as a musician or an artist. No, that's uh, that's 100 percent correct. It's, <laughs> I get comments every day because we launched a campaign surrounding the new album. 
And people are like, dude, I had no idea you were a musician. I, no <laughs> I was like, God damn, I mean, what have I been doing for the last two, hell, like the last decade? What have I, where have I been? You know what I mean? So, yeah, no, that, that's completely correct. But it is cool because Backwards is the first band that I've been a part of, a music project that I that I didn't have to, you know, hit an off switch or anything like that, where I'm putting, I'm giving it to you like I am as an activist as well as a musician, because I was living so many different lifestyles as, uh, you know, as an artist and an activist uh, that kind of set set it up as such. You know what I mean? Everybody, you got some people that knew me as a rapper, you know, some people that knew me as a person that fronted metal bands, and some people that knew me as an activist. Uh, Backwards was the first band that really that music project that I was a part of where you got all three of those kind of right. lifestyles find in the one. Right. And it's, and it's really cool. And I got to tell you, I was talking to my wife. I told her, yeah, we're going to have Eric July on. She said, who? And I, I said, okay, here, check this out. Watch this <laughs> video for this song called Be Great. It's going to tell you all you need to know about Eric July, his entire history for crying out loud, <laughs> his childhood through right. where he's at now. He's going to get, and he's not going to pull any punches. He's going to tell you exactly where he's coming from. Right. Yeah, that's exactly how the song was by design. It was like uh, we wanted to have it a change of pace. It was one of our heavier songs, obviously. And we had that big rap that kind of seemed to take over the rest of the, <laughs> of the song uh, uh, because of that. You know, it gave everybody the backstory and obviously me, uh, my fallout with my previous projects. And also, like you said, you know, just putting it out there and pouring my soul out there as far as letting up folks know about, you know, you know, who, where you might know me from. You got people that knew me as a gang banger, people that knew me as uh, the hip hop artist, people that knew me as front these bands. And, you know, I was a track and field athlete in college. I've been doing all of these different, different things. And uh, that was the, the, the song that kind of let everybody know, all right, this is what it's about. It's all coming together. And, you know, I'm happy. And, uh, you know, this is what it's about. Eric, for the people who have not heard the song and don't know your background, you were a hip-hop artist. Um, mm. At what point in time did you start bringing the metal into the mix? Oh, good good question. Uh, okay. Well, I, I, I had always uh, loved metal and, and, and hard, mm -hmm. hardcore. Um, thankfully, my mother was a well... I mean, she listened to everything, so I grew up on like that from the 70s soul stuff. Love uh, it. I mean, to the to the, you know, uh, like the Beastie Boys and uh, yeah. what it, uh, what oh, they yeah. were doing. I, and I always thought that that was cool to mix right. that kind of rap and, and rock element. I thought that was just so badass. But considering where I grew up, yeah. there was no way that I was going to be able to express that. People would have thought I was off the wall. <laughs> so it, it, it wasn't until I hit college, uh, you know, well, I take that back. High school, I was in kind of some band. Uh, because I had ended up, I got well, I didn't end up transfer. I got kicked out of uh, DISD. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I got kicked out of the uh, out of the high school that I was at, and I went to a more kind of diverse uh, mm -hmm. high school. So I was traveling like you know almost a half an hour uh, just to go to school. But it was in Mansfield where you got all those different cultures. So I was meeting people. It's funny because uh, the band Fit for a King. Uh, they had just came up and I had met uh, the front man of uh, Fit for a King, Ryan Kirby and all uh -huh. those guys uh, as well, because we all went to the same uh, high, uh, like district uh, right. when I was out there in high school. So it was so, so cool. But at, at that point, I was able to express myself. But uh, going into college and I was, you know, I went to Corpus Christi and I was meeting some other people, being a part of other bands. And I was actually as an instrumentalist, like a keyboardist and backup vocalist. It wasn't until like I started doing these covers on YouTube and stuff like that. that I became more open about myself as a as a mental, right. you know, vocalist. So I was, uh, you know, it wasn't until like my early, you know, early 20s when I really like was like, you know what? Screw this. I'm just going to be who it is that I that I am. I can still maybe do the rap on the side, but I just want to show people that I can do this, you know, metal hardcore stuff as well. Absolutely. You do you. And I tell you what, it's the it's the two genres that I absolutely love together. Love yeah, them. For sure. You, you know, you mentioned the uh, YouTube stuff with the vocal covers and I, I caught the one you did for Aggressive by Beartooth and I was blown away. <laughs> uh, really? I mean, because. In in actuality, it's hard to find people that that can sing that way and project that way and do it well. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's why sure. there's only so many bands that are really successful in that genre is because it, it's hard to get somebody that can really do it. Now I'm listening. I'm thinking, you know, if Caleb ever wanted to step down, <laughs> Eric could step right in. <laughs> I'm, I'm more than open for it. I'm a huge fan of uh, of Caleb too. I, I loved seeing his. Uh, 
kind of progression because he's, yeah. you know, he's a few years, a uh, couple of years younger than me and seeing his progression from becoming, I mean, everybody should follow this guy's story Absolutely. because he came from being just a keyboardist of, of attack attack right. to kind of gradually becoming a front man uh, before they disbanded. And he started uh, Beartooth and it, it took off and he's just such a phenomenal uh, for such a phenomenal vocalist and uh, the way that kind of that screaming style like his right. as well as Mike, Haran Mike Haranica from uh, Devil Wears Prada is like uh, along my line. So that's why it's easy for me to cover uh, those types of, of vocals because that's, you know, how I learned to do it as well. Right. Yeah. You know what? Caleb has this this raw thing about his yeah. vocal style. And you know what's really funny, Eric, is that I'm finding a lot more bands that are just adopting that style. Yeah. As I'm progressing through and checking out music, it's it's pretty amazing. I love it. Yeah, it's been a shift. I mean, you saw a lot of uh, bands kind of start doing that kind of uh, more grass, uh, like yeah. the raspy kind of uh, projection of vocals. Like we saw, for example, you know, Bring Me the Horizon, and mm -hmm. they when they switched to what they were doing, they're doing the same thing, and as well. So you're seeing a lot of these bands try to do that. Now, the hard thing about that is that you get a lot uh, some bands who want to do it. It's trendy. But can they do that stuff live? <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, right. Yeah. It, it, it is the key. So I, I try to not do, you know, too much in my in my regular music that I can't pull off uh, you know, doing doing live. And I it's like not, that. I don't want to hate on anybody that's doing that's doing that, but I don't wanna try because I, I get a lot of people that ask me, dude, why don't you do a lot a lot more singing on like the backwards stuff like I did in my previous band? It's like, dude, if you knew like the Look, listen to the song and think of the different types of vocals that I'm doing, like from right. the rapping and, and the screaming, like me adding that as well. You know what I mean? Is uh, I can do it, but that's going to really drain me if I do it live. So I, I just want to keep it realistic. Yeah, Come on, you absolutely. quitter. You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe going forward, I'm working on it, man. Yeah, we know. We, it's funny. We have some we have some songs in which I'm doing a lot more singing that we are going to be performing live it's just that i can't just doing it every song i think is unrealistic yeah are they are they some of the 18 songs on the oh, upcoming man. album that we haven't man. heard yet is that what you're telling <laughs> yes. us yeah that's yeah some of the 18 uh, almost 20 tracks it's 18 songs right not right. interludes or anything else 18 tracks right. 18 it's 18 tracks it's like it is one uh, interlude in it, but everything else, like so, seventeen of them are are just straight, straight up tracks. Uh, and the reason why we did that was because we are so diverse as a band. We came from a lot of different backgrounds. You know, uh, Alex being kind of he does that like I kind of R and B kind of singing that we don't get to let him do a lot that he was able to do on the album it, itself. And I, we got straight rap tracks that I'm on with no, none of the guitars or anything like that. We got, we got songs that are just really just heavy as balls. And then I, we got <laughs> one song that me and that me and uh, Alex are singing on that are, you know, it's no screaming, no rapping and we just straight up blowing on. So we had to do that. Uh, people, you know, that's one thing a lot of people point out about the, the track list. Like, dude, it's like, Hey, it's almost two albums. And one, I was like, we had to like there was if I did right. like just, you know, the typical or what's being done now, with like 11 songs or so. I was like, there's, there's so much that we haven't done. And thankfully, we came from that background where all a lot of albums like that were like and I came from the hip hop side, like like Nas and all these guys weren't dropping like 10 song albums right, like right. Miseducation, like 18 tracks. Uh, but you know, and Eminem and all these people that you know they were dropping, uh, you know, fifteen song albums at a, at a time, and I feel like that's what it's what it's all about. I want to give people that enjoy us. I want to give them uh some more. And hell, the next album might be more than that. You never know. So, what is the drop date on that? Drop date is uh March thirty first. So we're creeping on it a uh, little like a few weeks. Uh, yeah. and I'm I'm excited. I'm so excited. That's awesome. You got a promotion going right now where. <coughs> You're trying to get 2,000 pre-orders, correct? Right. right. And mm -hmm. when we hit 1,000, you're going to do some kind of freestyle rap? What's that all about? Well, at 1,000, uh, uh, you know, 1,000 pre-order, which we're creeping up on that, we are going to drop a uh, like a free, just straight-up rap-based mixtape. I do those little segments, those Ripper's Raps segment. A lot of people that knew me before all of this metal stuff uh, and just as a hip hop artist, that's what they want. So this is our way of giving back to them. It's going to be free, obviously, for a download for everybody to give them. That's just going to be strictly rap. 
uh, me doing a lot of like the old school stuff that a lot of people know me right. for. And uh, it's, it's also awesome. Uh, and it feels good for me to kind of showcase that uh, as well, because I think when we get to talking about people that mix rock elements with rap elements, uh, you know, it's, it, it can get a little cliche. And I got to show people that now I'm like an actual MC, man. Like this isn't no gimmick or anything. <laughs> Like that, you know, I grew up battle rapping and doing all of that kind of uh, stuff. So this is just a really uh, also a show of appreciation to a lot of people that knew us and knew me before all of this backward stuff and uh, right. knew me as a hip hop artist. And as a hip hop artist, you were YG Ripper. Yep. Right. Yep. And you come yep, up, you, you come up from a gang banging background. Right. I say that like a total white guy, don't I? Gang banging. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Sorry, man. I, it's just. I, anyway, how do you realize? When does this happen in your head that you realize that you can scream? And how do you develop that? Oh man, uh, it was early on. It was early on. Thankfully, I grew up in. Uh, I was just kind of, you know, you got that age where you're a youngster, where you're really starting to soak in uh, so much music. You're like eight, nine, ten, ten years old, and that's when you really decide. Are what I'm going to like going forward. And around that age, that was just when, you know, um, Rage, who I don't really agree with their politics, they were doing what they were doing. That was the same era. You know, that whole not about between about 97 and 2002. Think about all the albums that were dropping. That was when Hobbit Theory had dropped. Eminem right, had just right. dropped, uh, uh, you know, it's like Slim Shady LP as well as the Marshall right. Mathers uh, deal. It was just, you know, System of a Down were, uh, were kind of coming up. It was just so much good stuff that was just coming up in that era that I got to soak in like at, at, when I'm just now deciding what type of music. So I was listening to that and I see what Chester Bennington was pretty much my favorite vocalist uh, from Lincoln Park and seeing the cool things that he was doing and obviously hearing Shinoda alongside him. And I would try to mimic what they were doing, mimic what some of the okay, other, yeah. you know, being in Dallas, obviously being a Pantera fan as well, right. you know, trying yeah. to mimic, there it is. mimic what, <laughs> what, what these guys were doing. And uh, I always knew that I could that I could do it. It just wasn't until when I got older uh, that I kind of placed myself in a position where I can actually showcase people yeah. that this is something that I could do. You bring up the Rage Against the Machine comparison, and I don't know if you've read this or seen this. You probably have, but you've been called the libertarian Rage right. Against the Machine. Right. How does right. that make you feel, man? Well, it, it's it's interesting because. I know that that's how people can easily identify us. So I don't get, I don't get upset when people, um, you know, make that comparison because, you know, they hear the rock with the with the rock in the metal aspects and uh, they hear the political, the politics side of it. So I can understand why people would go there. You know what I mean? But we are we are a little different. Obviously, we're a little heavier uh, than than uh, what they do. Uh, and we you know, we do the singing elements and the screaming elements that they really don't. Uh, do a whole lot of showcasing and also politically uh, I would love to get in a, in a room and, and sit down with you know Zach and those guys and, Tom <laughs> and, 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 and tell them you know that they are wrong on so much uh, stuff you know, what I mean? because, you know what I mean like that's I, I like I, I respect them for what they were they were doing and I, I'll be the first to say like you know I'm not a commie you know what I mean so I don't really get down with with the red and black flags and stuff that they be throwing out there, man. So if I sat down with them, I'd be like, hey, man, great music, but I ain't really with your politics. You know what I mean? So, uh, but that'd be a great conversation. I'm sure a lot of people uh, would look forward to it. Look, Eric, I would pay huge money, <laughs> huge, to see that. I'm talking, so I'm talking like double figure. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, for sure. A lot of people would, man. And I, I would love to do it, man. I think that's probably an inevitable uh, thing that's going to happen as we grow that uh, we're, we're going to get those comparisons. And I love to, you know, get us, you know, somebody can set it up, get a podcast or something. You want Zach and me to talk because uh, hey. a lot of people think that th that we are similar because we talk politics. But you hear us talking. They're more of the they're more of the kind of, again, uh, uh, the left side of the anarch anarchist circle. We're on the right side of being capitalist. So uh, which they are uh, uh, claim to be against in a lot of cases, you see a lot like uh, which I find a lot uh, contradictory in a lot of cases when I see these guys uh, like the guitarists, uh, you know, doing these benefits for like fight for fight for 15. This is stuff that I would never get out there and do. I'm staunchly against any sort of government interference in the uh, in the market. So I think a lot of people pay a lot of money and I would love to do it. I love to sit down with the whole whole crew, man. And just we could just chat about 
uh, you know, where we're at and people that I think that's when a lot of people would see the differences between uh, where we're at on a political spectrum and what rage is at. Well, let's get a couple things clear here. Our show, we oh, we do a show where we strive to not talk about certain things, which would be politics and religion. Right. But right. that's just because we're entertainers, as you are. But you're a little bit of a different thing going on. You got, right. you know, oh. so let's talk about this. Let's talk about the label. Uh, if I've not got it incorrect, it is. Anarchy capitalist. Yeah, anarcho capitalist. Yep, that's it. Okay. And that is the label, that, the banner that you fly, right? Right. Yep. That's it. <clears throat> and so you have a podcast dedicated to that, which I, I spend some time with. Mm hmm. And um, that's some pretty interesting stuff. And you raise some hairs, don't you? Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's putting it lightly. That's putting it lightly. Uh, feathers are, are, are rough, ruffled, man. Like every time we do, yeah, we do our podcast, Backwards Live, as well as, uh, you know, I co founded the, uh, which is probably the uh, biggest uh, right now, kind of at least Facebook wise, a libertarian page and being yeah. libertarian and uh, right. being libertarian.com. Uh, co founded that, also run uh, co head of the multimedia department there. And uh, which is why I have the podcast backwards live and we get to talk about some of uh, the, the, the juicy topics, give a libertarian perspective on it. I mean, hell, we're not just ruffling feathers on people on the outside. We ruffle feathers <laughs> within our own community. Of <laughs> yeah. 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 But that, to me, that's what it's about. I, I uh, we want to uh, bring kind of. I don't want to be in an echo chamber. You know what I mean? It's all about yeah. bouncing ideas off of each other. Yeah. And I think this is how you make your arguments sharp. By really putting your ideas out there and hearing other people, you know, give their criticisms of it. And that's how you get better uh, at argumentation get, and get better at of uh, at out of defending the positions that you claim, you know, to adopt. If I'm in an echo chamber full of a bunch of people that just agree with me all the time, like how am I going to learn how to properly and more effectively uh, communicate my ideals and defend my ideals when a person does come by and say, well, this is my criticism of capitalism or libertarianism. Uh, you know what you got. If I'm talking in the echo chamber and I'm not used to defending that, then, you know, I could be made to look uh, really foolish and I'm not really doing a service to what it, the philosophy that I claim, you know, to adopt and uh, value and things like property rights, and non-aggression and, uh, you know, self-ownership and things. Right, that, right. Uh, to a, a a more prosperous and a, a society as a whole and a freer society. This is what I want to advocate. So I refuse to just kind of yell in, into an echo chamber. You don't come across as not intelligent. Let me tell you that. Uh, <laughs> in fact, true. I was really curious because I was looking back through your archives and I was wondering, how would you like to see a reaction video of Glenn Beck listening to your music? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, wouldn't that be a treat? <laughs> It'd be a treat. I, and I don't think he's ever heard. I've been on. I've been on because you know he owns Blaze. He's on the Blaze TV. Uh, he owns right. that. That's what he co-found when he left. Uh, well, that's what he found when he left, like Fox News. And I've been on the Blaze TV because that's based out out of Dallas. Uh, but I've not been on obviously his show. I've been on like Dana Loesch's show right, and right, um, right. friends with Lawrence uh, over there and stuff like that. So I'm pretty sure he hasn't heard. But he'd be in for a, 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 an awakening. <laughs> 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 for sure, ever cracked up back uh, song that'd be certainly interesting. Well, self ownership—that's a great song that's on the upcoming album, and that was one that kind of took me by surprise. Uh, here's the thing, quite honestly, Eric. There's a lot of artists that we talk to, a lot of artists that we listen to all the time. It's what we do; it's our job. Yeah. It's pretty rare that an artist makes me stop and listen, yep. and you've absolutely captured that, at least for this crowd. And that's kudos to you, sir. Now, Appreciate it. that's what it's about. You came up in an element where there was a lot of gang banging going on. And do you think that that audience is there for you now? Do you relate to that audience? Do you think they hear you? I'm, I still relate to them. Uh, I'll always relate to them. That's why I grew up. I was growing, uh, kind of born and raised in the same uh, unfortunate situations that a lot of these communities are in, you know, being in a, uh, you know, predominantly black. Uh, culture, obviously, and uh, single parent household and all that. I would never not relate. I understand that struggle. Some people had it better. Some people had it worse. But I, I absolutely under understand it. And I'm in a genre now predominantly that is uh, that they might not be accepting. Right. To, obviously. So I understand that. But this is why I do a lot of the rap, you know, stuff that I do on okay. the side to still keep those guys interested in stuff that I've always done. There will always be those that will think that even I wouldn't say even from the music standpoint, I think the political is what has 
if anything, has uh, distanced me from from a lot of people that I grew up with and the lifestyle that I grew up. It's the politics more than the music itself, because you got to understand this is uh, these black communities are. Le- I mean, it's leftists have a, uh, a like a, a strong arm on them. It's a it's a p- political monopoly, which is why you see election after election. The only demographic that's going to vote 90 percent plus for the Democratic Party or any party for that for that matter. It's a it's a monopoly on it. And I am on the opposite side to where I just, you know, I, I might align with them on some aspects, but I, will, I don't support that. I hate the Democratic Party. Uh, I think that they're very, very evil. I think that uh, what they've done to these communities are uh, destructive. The policies are destructive right. and some of the things that they advocate are diametrically opposed to advancing them. And they, but they, unfortunately they pose themselves as friends of, uh, of a lot of black folks. And, um, because I'm staunchly against them that has, you know, for people that grew up with me, uh, or knew me as that they see that and they're like, what the, what the hell? But, uh, I don't get it as much as maybe a lot of, maybe let's say like the conservative side of things, like maybe they get it because, I before I ever put my thoughts out there, I researched it thoroughly uh, right. to the point to where I know it like the back of my hand and I will forever be able to maneuver in no matter what the culture is, whether it be this culture, this rock, rock based culture or I go in the hood. I will forever be able to communicate those ideals with those people um, because uh, I, I believe in it. I'm passionate about it. But most importantly, I understand it so uh, I can actually communicate this to a lot of different right. people, no matter what culture or upbringing uh, that they had. Eric, growing up in an area heavy with gangs, what was the pivotal moment that pulled you away from gang activity? Oh, uh, man, I was uh, with this uh, chick that I was with. I was a track and field athlete um, in high school. That's what, That was my ticket out, actually, to get her out yeah. of it. Dallas was the, my uh, track and field scholarship. But I was chilling. The, the girl that I was with at the time mm-hmm. was a um, – uh, she was a basketball player. So, you know, they had their little practices uh, after school or, you know, open gym or whatever she was at. And I had my little track practice. And after all of that, we were kind of just kicking it outside the school, hanging out. And uh, this car people rolled up that, you know, obviously you're beefing on me. And it, you know, it put it in perspective because I'm like, these people, well, they had guns and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I'm putting somebody that has absolutely nothing to do with this in danger. Yeah. And that's when that's when it got real, because it's like. This is this is stupid. This whole obvious gangbanging is is ridiculous. Right. It's Agreed. silly. It's silly, silly that a lot of people, you know, they go out there terrorizing their own communities or beefing on people because of right. what side of right. what city they're from or what color they. That's, this is insane. Stupid. But yeah, it is stupid. But but that I mean, uh, amidst, amongst all of that, what did it for me was that again I was putting somebody that I cared about at the time so much uh in danger right. you know what i mean yeah. and that just, it just clicked like what the hell am i am i doing like i'm putting somebody that has nothing to do with this she has not a she's not a banger or anything like that she's a right. uh, sweet chick and uh she you know uh well so i thought she was obviously we're not together anymore. <laughs> that's, that's another story but you know she, she certainly wasn't the, no matter how what we what yeah. we were on, she did not deserve to have, uh, you know, her, her life in danger at any point in time uh, because of some silliness that I was uh, involved in. That was uh, unfair to her, unfair to my family members, unfair to my friends that maybe had nothing to do with this. It was just silly. And it clicked because I'm putting it in perspective, like what happens if 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 they, you know, if I'm outside and with my mother or some, uh, something like that and some uh, people that I dislike feel the need to come roll up on me and start shooting at me. And they, you know, knock, uh, you know, knock off my mother or something like that. Like right, that would be, right, yeah. that would be insane. You know what I mean? So it put it into perspective, and I slowly, gradually got away, you know, from it. And thankfully, I had the opportunity. It was that was the best thing that ever happened to me. Was uh, out of college, I went to the University of Memphis, and I even took a smaller scholarship to uh, schools that I could have went to in Texas just to get away, you know, from whatever the hell was going on in the Dallas, in the DFW, uh, W, uh, Metroplex, just get away, took that, uh, track scholarship to a uh, university of Memphis and I needed it. And it's still, uh, uh, to this day, I'm thankful that I took it because Lord knows what would have happened if I stayed, you know, in Dallas, <laughs> right. I easily, I easily could have got pulled back into that nonsense. You know, gangs are a huge epidemic 
Uh, it's not right. something that I personally have been involved with, um, which is a good thing. Um, but it's definitely something that I'm sensitive to. So let's just say that we have some young listeners listening right now who are thinking about joining a gang. What would your message to them be right now? It's it's stupid. Um, and the reason that is, I mean, I'm a libertarian and I'm all about individualism right. uh, because of that. And uh, it's it's collective. It's nonsense. It's, uh, you know, I know some people join these gangs because they feel as if they have to the protection aspect of <sighs> part of something and whatnot. But my thing is to, uh, you know, and I advocate that's what we talked about and be great as well in the song is that, you know, understanding who you are and being the best you being the best individual right. that you be is far more valuable than, uh, you know, claiming a set, uh, claiming a click or something like that, or just being part of something. And uh, this, I, I'm staunchly against uh, collectivism because of that, because that's what gangs are. That's what the government is. The state is a bunch of collectivist nonsense. And bitch, you got people that try to take credit for, mm -hmm. for stuff that they had nothing uh, to do with. And you got people paying for the mistakes of other people because right. they're part of this this uh this collective and it's so stupid uh because every individual is an individual you're not obligated really uh to any sort of lifestyle you're not doomed to 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 fail or doomed to uh, have a, a certain upbringing or anything like that so anybody that's thinking about joining it no matter what the reasoning is the long-term uh, effects if you just work on yourself uh, who you are as an actual, uh, you know, individual bettering, uh, you know, your craft. That's going to take you a lot further than any sort of tie to a color or a click or a side of town. Exactly. I love it. Thank you. I God appreciate that. Darn, man. You are one passionate fella. Yes, yeah. he is. You know that? Yeah. This he went is. real heavy in a hurry. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, Eric, you're obviously super passionate, very, very intelligent. You've accomplished a lot. You have a birthday coming up, right? You're 26 now. Is that right? Uh, yeah, 27. I'll be 27. Uh, Nate, dang, you just reminded me of that. Golly. <laughs> <laughs> I, forgot, I, I swear to God, next I forgot month. my yeah. birthday <laughs> was next month, man. Golly, that's crazy. For a guy who's not even 30 years old, you've seen a lot of stuff and done a lot of stuff. And you're, you're very passionate. And obviously, you're very engaged in your political platform and what you're doing. And and I get that. How does that um how does it affect like your family dynamic, mm -hmm. uh, your relatives and your band? Are they all behind that? Are they cool with it? Yeah, the, the band's all behind it. Family, I won't say. Uh, no, they're not. Because uh, they are still kind of stuck in that same mind frame of uh, yeah. of the leftist monopoly. As I said, they're still demo supporting like a Democratic Party and support thinking the government should be involved in certain, certain uh, you know, things. And, right. you know, they... And it's understandable, you know what I mean. They they purposely try to not mention because they know how active I am. So when we go to like fa family reunions, they purposely try not to bring up politics and stuff like. Because they know I'm not shy about it. Don't get me wrong. Because if they bring it up, if anybody brought up like, oh, uh, Obama. Uh, is the greatest this and this and that. And I'm going to tell them straight up, like, you're wrong. You know what I mean? I don't give a damn. How about my them first Lakers? Uh, 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 <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, that's that's more so what we talk about and stuff like that. But uh, I have, to be fair, uh, some of my, definitely the family members that I'm close to, they know where I'm at. Uh, my mother, uh, we have, uh, even though I think she's still kind of, uh, she's not as political as I am. I think she's still kind of thinking that the Democratic Party is the lesser of the evils uh, that are out there and stuff like that. But we... We have a lot of common ground. Um, she understands uh, where I'm coming from. Some of my family members understand we uh, where I'm coming from. And I think I've been able to successfully plant those those seeds uh, to them. And that's actually what I would encourage a lot of people who who have kind of found the light and realize, you know, the gov what the state is, realize uh, what libertarianism is, realize the beauty of, uh, of capitalism and stuff like that. Um, th those people, I encourage them to have the conversations with people that are culturally involved in with like family members and stuff like that, because those are going to be the people who are going to listen to you. It's funny because uh, you, my guys might not know, but amongst the libertarian community, that's always the, the, the thing that people are talking about is like, how do we reach out to these other uh, like lines of, of thinking and how do we spread actual, you know, libertarians and get libertarianism and get people to, to adopt it. And I'm saying a lot like, infiltrate culture that's what i'm doing like involved in the arts like everybody no matter who you are what you're involved in you're involved in some type of sub culture what well, mine just happened to be i'm heavily involved in music as a musician but you got people whether it be from the religious aspect or 
or, or you know, people are involved in the, you know, local, I don't know, yeah. cycling club or something like that. Mm-hmm. Like those are your tickets to, you know, uh, that's where you're going to be more successful in planting actual seeds uh, and, and, and bringing people over to your side. Because it's one thing for me to t- say something to a person that I've never met and try to influence them and plant a seed of libertarianism. It's another for you to do that, you know, to your family member or your friend, or your close friend or somebody that you see on a daily basis that you're involved in with the uh, subculture aspect. So, uh, you know, that's what I'm doing as, as a musician. That's exactly what I'm doing. What I'm trying to do is successfully infiltrate art uh, because I think that the culture is the down, uh, like the uh, politics are the downstream of culture. You change the uh, culture, politics change by default i'm not even politically uh active like i don't vote uh i haven't voted in the last uh, election i'm not staunchly against it or anything like that uh that's just not my thing art is my thing and music is my thing and making this making this relatable so uh that's what i encourage a lot of other people to do you know what i mean is talk to don't be afraid to talk to you know your family members or people that you're involved in uh that you see on a daily basis and just chat with them and those are going to be the people that you're going to be have the most success in bringing to your line of thinking See, I told you guys when we were going to have this guy on, he'd be the smartest guy we ever had on the show. <laughs> All right. I'll tell you what. I, I have to agree. Uh, enigmatic, man. You are absolutely a cult of personality. Yeah. I think that... About, hey, I, I take advantage of it. I take I, advantage. I, well, I, I think you're doing a great job, and I think that really, quite honestly, your politics aside, no offense when I say this, but the reason that we really were very interested in what you're doing is because of the music. Right. And Backwards is an amazing art form. It really is. Yeah. I don't want to stir any big pot here, but <laughs> your former band was very good, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, no, that's not stirring a pot. No, I'm an open book, man. No, so. no, I know. No, no, well, no. and you've talked about that. You kind of said what you had to say there. So, yeah, you know, yeah, if you want to yeah. talk about it, that's cool. I'm not trying to. <laughs> no, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, uh, a lot of people ask. It's like we, I do these uh, podcasts and, you know, interviews. I think a lot of people are, are afraid to, you know, ask ask me about it because, uh, you know, I, I, I have said what, I, what I've said about it. And I think it's a it's a culture shock because. On the rap community, they'll ask me about stuff like this all the time, but it's not really a common thing like this, maybe in the rock element to have people like, you know, well, I, I don't got any problem to say, like, I don't right. I don't mess with them. You know what I That's mean? Or what's I, or what I thought they, what the, what I thought what they would you know, what they do, I think, is, is the, some of the corniest stuff that I've ever seen uh, as a, as a musician. Um, you know what took place in my fallout with that with that band. I'm not a, I'm, a, I'm open book. You know what I mean? I think a lot of people and I understand. It, I understand it. Well, here's the thing, though. In the rap culture, it's not uncommon to have the us versus them, the East Coast versus the West Coast and what have you. Right. Right, And I I see those elements here and I kind Mm -hmm. of heard them and I wasn't sure what to do with it because we're (laughs) metalheads. So, yeah, (laughs) it's understandable, man. It's completely understandable. It's completely understandable. And that's an element because it's funny when I would drop be great. You had some people that were. Damn, he just dropped a diss song. I was like, you don't know the half of it. Because if it was a diss song, you know it's a diss song. That ain't no diss song right there. That's, that's just me telling you a story. That ain't that's slight work, man. A diss song, I will be at their neck. Like when I think beef, you know what I mean? I think like, all right, I'm gonna drop a song, I'm gonna talk about you, and then you might not, you know, if I see you, you know you're probably gonna have to throw hands with me. You know what I mean? That's what I consider uh beef or or or, or that's what diss. The uh, kind of behind a disc record would be that wasn't no damn disc record, man. That was just some <laughs> a track of me just telling people the backstory of what happened. It was n- nothing like that. Just remind me to do a good job with this conversation. So that- <laughs> <laughs> I, as much as I'd love to be in one of your songs, I don't think I want to be in that light. <laughs> uh, uh, people that know me, man, that's, that's what I grew. I grew up beef rapping, man. Like that's what that's what I was known for, like beefing. As a game bank, I put that stuff in my music, so I wouldn't. I was not shy about if there was a person that you know I, I considered an enemy or something like that. You know, battle rapping. That was just what. That's, I mean, understandably so. That's kind of the background of hip hop in general. Right. You know what I mean? Or uh, people did that, even if it wasn't like on like people didn't like actually dislike each other. People made like records against each other just because that's what the talent base of hip hop is all about. But yeah, Be Great wasn't wasn't a diss song or anything like that. That was just a song of me telling people, yeah, I thought it was whack. This is what happened. This is my side, you know, other story. If they ever and, you know, I, I don't think I've ever said this on, on, on a uh, like interview or anything like that. 
if they ever were to say something that was out of line, and this is why I think you don't you haven't heard anything from their party because they know obviously everything that I said was true. I've uh, not fabricated any sort of uh, story, and I also I know they're they're afraid. Like, all right, if it did come to a situation where, all right, we wanted to beef, they're not really gonna come out of that uh, victorious. It's not gonna. It's not. It's not gonna be victorious at all because <laughs> those are problems that they don't. They don't want. They don't want any sort of sort of problems with those. Because again, this is what I grew up. Are you saying they don't want to step to Eric July? No, uh, that's exactly what I'm saying. You know, <laughs> all right, like, all right, and all it's right. understandable. Got to pick your battles as a as a musician. Like they not. They not. They don't come from that hip hop background. All they did was try to do what I tried to do and uh, kind of mimic it and do they you know, uh, do whatever the hell it is that they're doing, but they're not like hip hop artists. The front man now is not a, not a rap guy. You know, he was in right. a fucking death, excuse my language, uh, but he was in no, a death no. core band, yeah. uh, uh, you know, before and, uh, you know, joining and replacing me as essentially a carbon copy. So this, this wasn't, this is not a person that's about that. You know what I mean? That's under, not, that's, understandably so some people aren't they don't go that route so i'm not knocking them for that you know stay in your lane and do your do your thing that's the that's the smart thing to do but if it ever came and that's that's to anybody that was uh it's not just to them that's to anybody who thought it was ever a good idea like oh i don't i don't like eric and i'm gonna make a song about him or i'm gonna, I'm gonna talk down to him like you're gonna have a bad time man <laughs> <laughs> too bad you're not confident <laughs> he's not confident at all but I'm the most friendliest person, uh, you know, ever. Like you, you have to, you have to, you would have to do something really like disrespectful. You, you look pretty huggable. Yeah, dude. Like I, I'm, I'm a teddy bear. Man. Like, yeah, get all that game banging stuff, man. Like you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a teddy bear, man. I, I, I try to. I mean, the philosophy that I, I claim to adopt of non-aggression, like that's kind of what it's about. Uh, so I, 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 I'm, I'm a, I'm a lovable person. And if, as long as you show love to me, I'm a show, I'm a forever love, show love to you. Uh, only time we're going to have an issue is if you, you know, disrespect me in, in some kind of way, uh, that, you know, rubs me, me the wrong way that it, that it kind of warrants a response out of me. Like I'm not shy about responding to you or anything like that, but don't get it twisted, man. I'm, uh, I show everybody love. It's uh, no no ego over here. I show everybody love and I'll forever uh, continue to do that. One of my biggest jobs is to kind of like take a step back from the microphone and from um, my headphones and put myself into the listener's perspective. And the segment that we just went over, there was no preface to it. So can you can you give a little bit of a history? So obviously you were in a previous band um, and you're not in that band anymore. Can you give a little bit of history on that band and what happened for our listeners? Right. Absolutely. You know, I was a uh, front man of fire from the gods. Uh, I joined that and uh, it was a great opportunity because uh, I was starting to grow as a vocalist, um, you know, doing the covers and stuff on YouTube. And, um, you know, they had a spot, you know, based out of uh you know, we had a couple of mutual friends, you know, based out of an area that I was in, obviously, in Texas and stuff like that. And it was just we clicked, uh, had some great memories with that band. Uh, the falling, it, the only fallout and the reason why I'm not I'm not still in it is because at the time they were they were wanting to, you know, tour. Mm -hmm. And that would have required me to, you know, quit my job that I was working out of college and stuff like that. Uh, and I just wasn't I thought that was stupid. I thought we had a lot of groundwork to do. I know a lot of musicians do this. Yeah. But, you know, I came from a business background uh, and I take a lot of what has happened even in the mu in the musical side of thing. And, yeah, some of it is called industry standard, but some of this stuff doesn't make sense. I mean, you put some of the logic behind uh, taking a leap of faith like that in a, from a business standpoint. It's stupid. It's retarded. Like, you know, business owner. Uh, would do that and think like they're going to see any type of legitimate return from it. And I thought it was retarded. Uh, I thought it was ridiculous that we were going to uh, get on a roll. We hadn't laid any foundation or anything like that just for the sake of uh, touring, just for touring in front of, you know, we might do a local one. And, right, you know, uh, right. it's just, it just none of this made, made any sense. So we fell out. I left. Um, and funny uh, story behind all of that is I left on good terms. And the manager at the time, like I had actually semi almost agreed to, it turned out, you know, I was like, this doesn't really make sense. But I was almost going to be a ghostwriter for them going forward. Uh, so it, we, didn't, we didn't. Yeah, we didn't leave on bad terms or yeah. anything like that. It didn't hit the fan <laughs> until when I left and they tried to put out a song called Eat, which I had wrote and recorded 
before I left and they without my consent, they uh. literally got the they added the, you know, they was doing the two vocalist thing. I was just I was the only vocalist when I was in. They had the guy that was kind of replaced me and then they brought the black dude, you know, to be me essentially. <laughs> and uh Sorry, and uh, funny. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, yeah, it, it, when you think it's it's, it's it's like, damn, why the, how the hell did they get away with doing that? But they did it. And and uh you know, but it wasn't even that they tried to like redo the no, the dudes literally did it exactly like I did it trying to rap it like me, yeah. trying to sing it like me, trying to scream it like me, and then put it out like I was just going to be okay with that. <laughs> Nobody hit me up and said, man, we're going to like, and I'm sitting, but like, it was funny because the guy that uh, our producer, um, you know, uh, right now, when the guy that really brought the band together said, man, uh, your old band released a new song, man. Uh, you know, it sounds a lot like something you would do. And I was thinking, well, like, <laughs> like, like oh, right, they just tried to do it. And I was like, no, they literally just put out this song and tried to make it as if it was their own. And I thought that was the most disrespectful thing from an artist standpoint that, you know, somebody would try to take your art, art and put it out there as if it was yours. Uh, that's disrespectful. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy as an artist. I think that's uh, it's like robbing somebody. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. and, and when you do something like that. And that's when it got to a point to where I was like, this is the wackest stuff that I've ever seen. And uh, even from a like the front man, from a style standpoint, you know, I still brought that hip hop element to me. Like I wasn't dressing like a metal vocalist yeah. or anything like that. It's like a street, and this guy's tried to do that. You know what I mean? He wasn't yeah. doing none of that. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, this dude literally is a carbon copy of me. Like, it's it's people to this day that still think I'm still, and I get messed. I got tagged in a Twitter photo today. <laughs> I, uh, I swear to God, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not making this up. But God thought it was me. I was like, that's not me, bro. So did you approach them about it and let them? Oh, know absolutely. How you yeah, I, I let them know that it was the corniest thing, and uh, it was actually, you know, I own the rights to the music, so it was, uh, it was a. Uh, it was a full takedown of it. You, just, like, you can't even find it online no more. Uh, you know what I mean? The song that is, you can just find the articles and stuff the, of, the, of the actual release. You can't find the song because I own, I wrote it. So I, of course I own, I yeah. own, I own a record. You know what I mean? So uh, yeah, I did. I, I, I let them know. You know what I mean? I thought it was the corniest thing, and I wasn't shy about it. They they've seen uh, what I've had, you know, to to say about it. But the crazy thing is, even amongst all that, nobody ever picked up the phone and called me and apologized. Or say it was a misunderstanding or anything like that. That never happened. It was like they, they the takedown happened and they tried to ignore it out of e existence. And they're actually lucky that I didn't go like full blown. Like I'm about to. It was it was beef worthy. It's funny people that you know you know our buddies back at home. You know that grew up with me on the hip hop side. They're like, bro, we need to be at they next. Like, <laughs> what are we doing? Like, <laughs> we should be at home. yeah, are we trying to destroy careers. Like, like this is the most disrespectful stuff. But I was like, nah, I'm gonna let them make it. It's, and it's mainly because I still had a lot of respect for the people that were involved in it. And ultimately, it was something that I helped grow. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. like it, it's like, damn, I don't want to see you know. I made them, you know what I mean? I don't want to see a, something that I made go in the crap. But like I said, they, they're still on that thin line because it, it still hasn't been, like, resolved. I still think it, it was corny. What the, they're trying to fill out their sound and do their own thing, but it doesn't change the fact from the appearance song and the sound uh, element. They tried to literally get a guy to sound and do exactly what I did. So they're still on a thin ice to where if they said something out of line and I got word on them, I can't promise that I wouldn't go at them. You know what I mean? But, uh, you know, they're doing their own thing. It is what it is. Let them have, you know, you know, their success. And we're going to do what it is that we do. And anytime somebody asks me about it, I'm not going to shout, shout around it and say, act like, oh, well, it's all good. No, I still think what what they did was the corniest, weakest pathetic thing that I've ever seen uh, and experienced as a musician. Sounds like you're about to go Suge Knight on their ass. No, nah, no, nah, not quite. Not quite. <laughs> a lot, again, the thing is, if I did it, it would be like, it's not like I'm not doing it without reason. You know what I mean? Uh, right. That's like for somebody to do that, uh, it, it, was, it, was, it was whack. And if I did come at them, nobody could ever say like, oh, I'm overreacting because that what they did was uh, of the utmost uh, disrespect. So, yeah, you know, right. it is what it is. Let them do what they do. Uh, they, I think what they're doing is a smart thing. It's trying to ignore it out of existence, act like it never happened, and and uh, try to ride off of that. You know what I mean? I think they do that by design because they know 
if they if they they got to keep me happy. You know what I mean? Because if it came, if it came <laughs> to a point, I had to get at them. It's not it's not going to be something that they're going to uh, that they're going to benefit from. And it's because they don't come from that hip hop background. So it's not like they would know what to do in that situation. You know what I mean? So yeah. it is what it is. You know, what I mean? let them let them do what it is that they do. I don't have any kind of like, you know, animosity or anything like that. I'm not going to go about, uh, you know, uh, trying to center my career uh, right, off right. of do it is what it is. You know what I mean? We're still doing our thing. They're doing they're doing their thing. But again, if, if ever anybody ever asked me about it, I'm not going to shy away from it because I do think uh, from an artist standpoint, you know, it, it, people should know that, that that shouldn't be tolerated. Yeah. Well, thank you for digging a little deeper on that. That's awesome. So you mentioned starting with a good base before you mm -hmm. go out and start touring and all that. And I noticed you guys on this album – the, you didn't necessarily sign with the record company. You still no. you get into a partnership, right? Yeah, we got into a partnership to help us with uh, things that you know we you know couldn't do, like such as distribution and uh, some of the marketing aspects that we needed help you know uh, with as uh, well. But but hell, from the marketing standpoint, we put so we spent a, a lot of money on that. The record itself, we still own our publishing and stuff like like that. No, we didn't sign a, a standard uh, uh, deal, and we refused to. Uh, so as long as we're doing it, uh, we're trying to keep it as independent as possible, because, again, just from the business aspect, you look at the industry standard uh, stuff. And thankfully, I uh, had the experience of of having to manage millions of dollars and being in a GM of, of certain businesses. You know what I mean? A uh, hundred thousand millions of dollars, uh, you know, coming out of college and being a general manager in the gym gym industry. And then went to like kind of the hotel resort industry uh, as well. And doing all of that and, uh, you know, just uh, approaching business, it just didn't make sense. Like signing a standard record. I don't know why half the deals that these uh, artists sign, I think, is, a, is just so stupid. I'm like, you're not getting anything out of that. And the label owns you and your music. Right. Like, what the hell are you doing? And I know people want to get out there and they think it's all fun. Uh, I want to be in the limelight. I'm going right. to get all this. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the label has all of this. Uh, like they're going to put me in front of everybody's face and, and stuff like that. And I understand that you want to be in a lot. Like you want to play in front of so many people and you want to see the instant success that you might not see uh, taking the route that we're going. But just from a long term standpoint, the, the the business element and just when I look at the standard deal, when we would get all those offers, I'm like, there is no way in hell if I put this the same kind of structure in any other element of business no, in a different like uh uh, genre and uh, not, and I'm not talking about musical genre. I'm talking about just uh, from a different business aspect. Uh, no matter what it was, if I put that kind of deal and I sent that to you know a business owner, they'd be like, "This is retarded." There's no, I know where I, I, I would sign. Like, I'm not seeing a return from this. Why would I do that? Uh, so that's the element that I put. And I had so many people, old managers and stuff like that, that would tell me, "Oh, what you're gonna do?" And it's so foolish. Like our first big tour. Is now, you know what I mean? Is a uh, upcoming week with like Monster Flames, right? And, and right. sworn in, and it took us right. two years to do that. But so many people said that that would never happen. They said I had to sign a record label. Right. I had to uh, do all these silly, uh, uh, like kind of no name tours uh, by by ourselves or with some local people that we would, you know, might be performing in front of ten people a night. People swore that I had to do that before I ever jumped on a on a show on a tour like this and back with shows them that they were all full of crap. That was bogus. That was uh nonsensical. We never had to put ourselves in a position of where we had to, uh, uh, you know, quit like, uh, what we were doing at home, you know, kind of the basic money making schemes. Cause we all adults, man. We all got mortgages, man. We got, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, right. Hey man, like, nobody's, yeah, like, oh, I'm not doing all this stupidness. Eric, you, I got to tell you, man, you, you make our job so easy. Cause I don't even have to ask the questions I have written down, man. You already, you already, you know. When did you start mind reading? Cause I was gonna ask you all that shit, but now I'm not gonna anymore. And as, as a businessman, you did a great job with the Mustang Ranch, so the, good job there. Uh, <laughs> it took him a minute. Oh, I play, I play, I play. Let's rewind just a little bit, just a little bit. You're yep. talking about, you know, a partnership. And I, yeah. I want to touch on this for a couple of reasons. One is very selfish. Um, I'm a huge mm. fan of the guy that you're doing business with, and yeah. with Franz and yeah. uh, Attila. And yeah. th that's kind of an unlikely partnership, yet a brilliant one, because he he's a smart, smart, 
smart businessman. Oh, man, people can say what they want to about Franz because of the style, the kind of party music that the band oh, plays. Whatever, but, dude, whatever. It, yeah, he got it, his he's one together. Of the smartest. Yeah. yeah, he's one of the smartest. He's made a lot of money. Uh, he's one of the, he's well off. He's one of the smartest people uh, out there. Uh, and uh, you can't knock that. I don't care who you are. You cannot knock that as a businessman. So it's funny because uh, they were one of the first rounds in, uh, of, of people that hit us up kind of with a standard deal. Uh, we were like, obviously, no. But we kept talking to, you know, the people that were involved, Franz and, and, and Mike and the guys that are involved with stay with Stacey uh, recordings behind the scenes that we just built a friendship over the years. They respected what we were doing. Uh, we, were, we I respect a lot what Franz is doing, like you said. You know what I mean? I love what he does as, as a businessman uh, because I uh, things that I'm involved in, I got my own like stuff that I, I have going, so I respect somebody that's doing that on top of being a musician. Uh, and I had a lot of love for that, and we we, we found that common ground, and we, we would – find a lot of common ground where we just chat about random stuff. So it just made sense. It just made sense that we were like, all right, let's come up with a way to where we can work together. I can help them behind the scenes. They can help me uh, uh, with uh, the band behind the scenes. And we can just come up with a unique thing. It doesn't have to be standard. We're, we're all businessmen here. Let's come up with something that made sense. And it was just a, just a, just a little <laughs> partnership that we got. And it, it's it's wonderful. It's, uh, it's, it's done exactly what we thought that it was uh going to do but big shout out to them because what they're doing uh and shout out to Franz to to take a step back from what they do standardly with all the label with all the bands the wonderful bands that are on their label don't get it twisted uh that they're doing uh it's cool for him to take a step back and reanalyze it just shows how much of a businessman he is because he was able to take a step back and say all right whatever that I've done uh standard with with maybe just from a label standpoint I'm ditching all of that. We starting from scratch. Let's come up. Let's talk. Let's talk actual business because, you know, we're all here uh, in it together and uh, we, we respect one another. So how can we help each other? How can we take what we're doing together and make it uh, something massive? So so what is that? What is that deal? So how does that work? Well, you, you retain uh, yeah, intellectual I, I, we, property. We still, yeah, we retain we retain all of that. We retain, uh, uh, like I say, like our publishing, the creative direction, like uh, a lot of people don't know, like a lot of these big bands that you see, uh, they're they're owned, man. I mean, the labels decides what they're going to do, what tours they're going to uh, uh, pretty much hop on, what, um, you know, what kind of, uh, you know, uh, music they got to put out and stuff like that. Yeah. And, and when they put out the record, how what's going to be on the record and stuff like that. Those are stuff that we still keep all control over. So we still control the music itself, the direction we're going to go in, uh, what, you know, you know, tours we're going to jump on, the what records are going on the song, uh, like what, uh, what songs are going on the record, excuse me. We control all of that. The label had no, uh, they trusted, you know, us to just put out, you know, be us. You know what I mean? So that's what it entailed is that there's, but there are certain things that we couldn't tap in. You know what I mean? Like right, there's right. A, marketing ele- a marketing element and stuff, uh, that relationships that they have that we don't have built yet. So we were able to use them kind of as as an extension. And there's some stuff that I, I can't go into too much detail That's that I'm okay. helping them yeah. with uh, on, on the back back side of things, just on a business tip. You know what I mean? That uh, we're able to help each other out. So it's ju- it just made sense to where so, they get to do what, they, what they're good at. We get to do what we're good at. And everybody pretty much get to uh, put up mo- like for the record itself. Like we put up money, like the money, amount of money that we're spending. You know what I mean? It's, it was essentially like we just need you to be a, a middleman. We, if we got to pay for the record we'll pay for the record we got money uh to pay for the for the record itself to get it recorded to go to you know who we're gonna get it recorded by and maybe you got a a, a sweet deal that you can get to have our music elsewhere we'll pay for that you know what i mean just put our foots in the door right. uh, our feet in the door and that's what it was about uh with as far as this partnership it's, they have stuff we can tap into so it's reciprocal but let me ask Absolutely. you this did you have to coach Franz, with a song that you wrote, did you uh, <laughs> that he helped you uh, on? That? <laughs> good I, I, I did, I did. And he, and he, it, it's all love, it's all love, man. Love him to death. But yeah, I had to, I had to coach him. You know, uh, on that, I, I helped uh, as far as like a little bit of the uh, uh, writing elements and stuff of the song that he jumped on too. That's but, a badass song, man. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, it's awesome. It's awesome. It was a great. Uh, he he, he kind of fit it like it was like a hand and glove fit. Yeah, yeah. His part. When me and him going back and forth and stuff like that, I, I know a lot of people wanted to hear that, and it was really, it was really cool, um, you know, to do. And I'm uh, much love for him agreeing to 
to do that. That was another kind of natural thing. It wasn't forced or anything like that. It was like, yeah, we're doing all this business together. We're well, both musicians. We might as well jump on a track together. You know what I mean? So oh, yeah. we did it. And, and well, it that's kind of an old school hip hop thing, too, right? Yeah, I mean, exactly. The collaboration. Exactly. It's an interesting thing to see that crossover. The hip hop metal yeah. is kind of almost the same mentality, just in a little more tattooed hardcore way. It's, it, it's, it's so <laughs> funny that you say that because I played rowdy music as a hip hop you know, artist. That's what I was known for before I kind of got more conscious. What, what is rowdy music? Popular. When I mean rowdy, I mean it was like remember these were beefing songs, almost popular <laughs> song, which you could which you could steal YouTube right now, which is uh it was called Bring the Beef. It was me, the guy that I rap with, Jay Dunn, and uh one of our homegirls jumped on the track as well. It's called Bring the Beef. Uh was the biggest song that we had ever recorded. We were performing this from we were still youngsters. Go cheat, go check it out. Yeah, we're uh, gonna check it out. <laughs> uh it's called Bring it's called Bring the Beef. That's B-R-A-N-G, the beef. You can still see it on on YouTube uh with myself, Jay Dunn. And, uh, and CJ, we all were on it and she, you know, she killed it. He killed it. But we were performing this song in adult clubs, teenage, uh, little clubs around the area. Cause we were still teenagers when we, uh, when we performed that. And I mean, people were getting, I mean, we couldn't even get to my, my verse was the second verse. Half the time we couldn't even get there because their fights were already freaking out. You know what I mean? Before we even got there, people were already beating each other up. That's how ratty. That's how ratty the song was. It was very seldom when it job before Jay Dunn because we never got to his part. Uh, we were lucky to get to mine, yet alone a third verse. Uh, and if if we had the fight, was sure gonna start with his part because he had the live part of the song. So it was. I mean, we performed these. I mean, by the sort of the sort of the beat drop, people were like, oh snap. And people, oh, I don't like that person. Ah, oh, they from they from uh they from that side. We from that side. Let's go ahead. We're gonna start rumbling right now. So uh <laughs> it's funny to hear like now I'm in the middle side. And granted, this is more consensual. You know, people aren't beating each other up. Uh, <laughs> my, yeah, but this is more consensual. Everybody, you know, knows kind well, of we got it's an actual etiquette to, to, right? to mosh well, and stuff Unless like you're that. in the mosh pit, right? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? So it's uh it's uh, it was kind of funny to see. Uh, the crowds be a little similar in that aspect because we were performing real rowdy music. I'm still performing rowdy music. It's just to a different, uh, Hell different yeah. crowd. Hell yeah. It does have a lot of, a uh, lot of crossover. And I think that's why, uh, when you do see rap mixed with uh, another genre, I think it goes the best hand and glove fit with stuff like, like metal, because a lot of the cultural stuff that's is interesting, is, uh, isn't it? It's, it's the same. Yeah. Right. It's interesting. Talking about mosh etiquette. Mm -hmm. When was the last time you were in the pit? Yeah, when was the last time that I was uh, in a pit? I'm trying to think of the last. Uh, oh, for today they had their, uh, you know, you know, <laughs> they woke up and they had their uh, with the, who was all on that? I can't remember who was. I know Silent Planet was on that. Norma Jean, Norma Jean oh, was yeah, on that yeah, yeah. Uh, tour, and a uh, big fans uh, of them and uh, love for today. One of my favorite bands uh, ever. And they had their farewell tour, and that was the last, uh, you know, show that I was actually in. And I was, I was in the pit, like yeah. legit, was was inside of the pit, not standing around looking. So that was fun. Throughout your whole musical career, in whichever genre and at whatever point in time of your life of this musical career that you've had, what is the most crazy, insane thing that you've seen at a show? Oh man, uh, it's funny. We had a recent show. Uh -huh. That was that was insane. Uh, that we performed in Austin. Big shout out to uh, those guys and the Dirty Dirty Dog. Uh, I wouldn't say it's probably my most craziest, but uh, it's up there. And it was it, it, the, it did set the tone for what backwards is because anybody that sees us live, we're we're chaotic. I mean, yeah, we we get down and uh, you know we got this whole intellectual kind of lyrics, but man, we're all over the damn place. We don't yeah. coordinate. It. <laughs> we're we're so we're so chaotic. And there was a song that's uh. That we haven't released yet. It's on an album called Demon Rat. And, and Alex, you know what I mean? The bassist, he gets mid set, didn't tell anybody that he was going to do this. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a part in the song where it gets kind of heavy uh, because you think at the beginning of the song, it's one of our more chill songs. So I'm not really screaming, I'm just rapping. Right. Uh, and it gets to a part to where I get to yelling as a breakdown about to come. He gets, he takes off his bass, jumps in the crowd. Uh, and he's like before, and I, I, I legit like probably blacked out because I don't even remember what the hell was going on. Because I'm on, the, I'm, I'm seeing we got footage of this too. I'm like on the ground, like screaming the lyrics, and I'm 
I don't even think I was singing the right stuff uh, because I was so hyped up. Alex is in the crowd like he's, a, like he's an audience member, uh, actually in there moshing, not even playing the bass. Uh, and I, and I'm not even singing the words to the song. I'm just yelling. And it was so such a treat for everybody. And, and I think that's probably going to be the typical for that song is that uh, it, everybody's just going to get fed up. Oh, and we're just gonna do I got to get my hands yeah, on like, Demon oh, Rat. So Demon cool. Rat is such a you, – you'll know when you hear the song, you'll know the part – that we're talking about because it just gets so heavy, like oh out of goodness. out of nowhere. So, when are you guys coming to California? Oh, I hope we get out there soon. Uh, I'm, unfortunately, the the tour that we're hopping on with Like Moss the Flames, I think that was the biggest gripe that we got a lot of crap from a lot of fans. I know Like Moss fans, the Sword Ends fans got it too because they're yeah. like, "Why the hell is this tour not coming to uh, the West Coast?" <laughs> we see that a lot. A, it's such a, yeah, it's such a good lineup though, you know, and I would love to to play out there i got uh, uh it's been a while since i've been out there uh played a show so hopefully the next tour obviously will stop by uh we'll we'll announce those we got some stuff kind of in the background going on so hopefully we hit california soon yeah uh, awesome. honest brutality presents backwards what do you think oh man let's do it yeah Come right <laughs> Hey, game on. Right, let's game on. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, no, I, seriously. Yeah, you're I did always see, welcome uh, out here. I did see that you guys are on at least one festival lineup this year. Um, are you guys looking to get into more festivals as well? Yeah, l- looking to get in more festivals. Uh, but the band is so it's so <laughs> different because we're so like uh again, we got the political aspect, and because we've became kind of almost a spokesman for libertarianism. We do other kind of unorthodox shows like we just were in Mexico performing at Anarcho Poco, which is a big uh, anarchist uh, conference that uh, happens uh, in, in Anarcho uh, Poco, Mexico, that we just performed before. And like two weeks before that, we were at Students for Liberty conference that uh, we did kind of a special set with just me and Alex, the other vocalist uh, that we did. So we're doing like kind of which is a little different. We can. We can because we have that dynamic, and maybe people just want to hear more of the hip hoppy R and B like electronical stuff. Uh, we can do that. Me and Alice can do a show by ourselves, or we got some sets that we go to like uh, the Mexico show with a whole band. They want to bring the whole band, but it's a conference that uh, of, of different ideas coming together. So we we're all over the place, and so we'll do festivals, uh, but not just on the music side of things we got a couple of stuff that we're working on in the background that's just like liberty conferences that well, we're being a part yeah, of you know that's what awesome. we'll get you out here and we'll do an honest brutalitarian conference hey, <laughs> I, I, I like the way that sounds brutalitarian <laughs> i love the way it sounds i love it i love that <laughs> as soon as we hang that. up as soon as we hang up i'm gonna i'm gonna copyright that just so <laughs> you know <laughs> that, that, that's awesome man you gotta copyright that man that's amazing uh, that's a what advice do you have for up and coming artists, no matter what genre they're in? Oh man, keep if you can, as long as you can, keep it independent. Uh, and I know that may be cliche, and it may be easier said than done because I've in the two years that Backwards has been together, I've seen people rise, I've seen people fall, I've seen uh, bands, uh, you know, sell away everything, be miserable, even though they're having a lot of success as far as like the music is doing numbers, but they're utterly they're just miserable because the label uh, controls them. And don't right. get it twisted. There are some people that have great experiences um, with with labels. But my honest uh, uh, opinion is to approach your you should approach your your band or your your artistry as as a brand and a business, first and foremost, um, just like anything else. It's just you you just happen to be using your your art, uh, you know, you're using art, you know what I mean? So keep it independent if you can. Keep it uh, and approach it like a business. If something doesn't make sense and don't pass the smell test, then you need to turn it down. <laughs> uh, so, and and sometimes, sometimes it happens. Sometimes you'll see something that looks so good on paper and it's like, man, I'm going to get this initial success. They're promising me all of this, but it's not worth selling everything that you've got, you know, off for, for that and not being able to control your creative um, you know, direction and stuff like that. So my my honest opinion is to keep it independent as you can and build a build a base of, of loyal uh, uh, fan uh, like because uh, people are going to be on notice. That's what happened with backwards is that we just put put a lot of people on notice, even though we hadn't signed to any sort of label. We kept it kept it independent and put a lot of people on notice. Uh, we were we were ruffling feathers, obviously, and people were, <laughs> uh, you know, seeing our music they're like, man, these guys are being really, really blunt 
Uh, but that was just that's who we are. You know what I mean? That's part of part of the charm that is backwards is that we keep it honest. And a lot of people feel that is definitely in our community is a refreshing. You know what I mean? So that's what we tapped into. We found a base, which is the, our base is the people that uh, believe in freedom and uh, want to want uh, just just honest lyrics. Even if they don't believe in what it is, they just respect somebody just putting their neck on the line to uh, put a target on their back. You know what I mean? That's what it's about uh, for a lot of people. So that's what what our little deal and we found out what we were good at and we kept building on it so find what you're good at you're gonna get the haters you're gonna get uh and if you're actually seeing success and people are catching on maybe uh you gotta pass up the first five deals uh before you come up with something that makes sense you know what i mean so that's what it's about and that's what i encourage a lot of youngsters uh in uh, old heads whoever whatever you're doing it anybody that's doing uh music that's starting to see some success just keep it independent and treat your brand like it's a business just to elaborate on that question just a little bit, mm-hmm. let's just say that Honest Brutality is a band, because really we are. Yeah. We really are. I'm the yeah. vocalist. So. But, <laughs> but let's just, let's, <laughs> don't quit your day job, Sloppy. Shut up. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> let, the, let the Reverend Eric July talk here. So, hold on, hold on. so <laughs> sorry about that. Okay, so Honest Brutality is a band, right? And we we have our product, we have our fan base. I mean, we have amazing music and we're just, we're there. We're at that point. How does Honest Brutality get on tour? Who do we need to be reaching out to? Smart, smart. Well, there's a a lot of different agencies that are out there um, that, um, you know, will, that's all they do. You know what I mean? You can get you a booking agent be big or small and get you an actual booking agents. We w- we work with uh, uh, APA. Uh, big shout out to Andrew and all those guys over at APA who books, obviously, some of the biggest names. He's awesome at, at, what, he, at what he does, but even before we even brought them on, we were, we were building relationships with like local promoters and stuff like that, so we were a lot of bands would come on, come through town, and uh, we would be on a ticket as well, you know, for opening opening acts, and right, I would right. say that's that's a, 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 a fine you know, local promoters, get in good, yeah. you know, with them, uh, you know, but work on your craft first. I mean, right. before you get a lot of people, uh, I see these people don't even re- have anything to record and they think they're going to just get out there and do these big shows. <laughs> right. And like, like, you know, they don't even have like and in the, the records that they do have. It's not like professionally uh, mixed or mastered or anything like that. Like right. work on that first. Put your money into that. Get like a little EP or something out, you know what I mean? And just uh, get a foundation for some music that you could point to and then start submitting that to, uh, because that's what, you know, promoters and stuff want to hear. Like, hey, I see you got this coming in town. You should check us out. You know what I mean? Like they'll start putting you on shows and stuff like that. And you start working yourself up and you're introducing yourself to to uh, fans and stuff like that. So most definitely you don't even have to te- necessarily go through an agency to do anything like that. We didn't, you know, we built, we built relationships with different promoters and we built the demand because we had a product out there before we even were doing shows. We were already recording music and had all this uh, music videos and stuff like that out. So work on your craft first and foremost, and then start submitting that stuff to a lot of local uh, promoters. You don't even have to necessarily go through an agency, but an agency, yeah, that's going to put you put you over the top. If you want a person that's that's all they do is find you shows, find you tours and find you stuff to get get on. But a lot of that stuff you can do yourself, but you got to work on your craft first. Right. You, you really nailed it because we we're always looking for new unsigned musicians. That's a big part of what our show is. It's basically Huge. what our show it is. is. Yeah. And we're always asking them to submit music and we get stuff in all the time that people expect us to play on our radio show that the quality right. is just not there. No, They're not, not there, putting yeah. the, the effort into making that good quality piece of music. And, and for the record, Eric, we are former musicians most of sure. us yeah, so sure. and or still sense. active so that we know right we get yeah. it right exactly yeah you got i mean I've, I've seen people submit this stuff to me as well you know asking me about advice and that's the first thing i, I, I you know without hurting their feelings i say look man this quality of this recording is not that good you probably try to do it yourself which is respectable but if you don't have like the proper you know equipment or stuff like that mm-hmm. pay somebody else to do it that, yeah. that you know yeah. the engineer your stuff and yeah, it might cost a pretty penny, but save and record yes, that because sir. if you don't have that, right. if you don't have that, then you don't got jack. You know, Amen. you're not gonna submit that stuff to a to a promoter and they're gonna be like, I can't, I can't do anything with this. Even if you're good, I can't really tell because the recording is so right. uh bad. You know what I mean? Right. So yeah, nobody's gonna take that stuff 
you know, seriously until you work on your craft. And that's what we do. We write so much on our image. Like, this is why you see since day one, we came out. Our first song that we dropped had a music video uh, behind it, and that was Grindstone. You know what I mean? We yep. I had the relationship that I built in my pre previous bands, and we were spending thousands of dollars just to get the recording right, just to get the music video, just to have something uh, behind it because we want to be taken serious. I mean, how yeah. do you compete with uh, definitely in this digital age where you got so many of these big people doing all of this creative stuff and having great sound, uh, sounding uh, quality music and visuals and stuff like that? How do you compete with that as a local, uh, as a person that's uh, starting off? You think you're not going to compete with that by giving some crap kind of uh, in home stuff that you didn't really, you know, uh, that doesn't really equate to anything that somebody else is doing that's already out there. Again, this is a market. It's no, it's no different from any other market, whether you're just selling candy or something like that. It's no yeah. different. You got competition yep. and stuff like that. You got to think of it like that. Like, well, that's what we thought. Like, we're competing with all of these different, but we can't half ass this. We got to put out uh, something that, that's proper, something that sounds good, something that looks good. And this is what I encourage a lot of musicians to do. Thank you so much for that, Eric. Like Sloppy said, we talk to bands all the time. I mean, this is this is what we do. And you just have this variety of bands and where they are at the stages in their career. So you have the bands that are DIY. Um, mm -hmm. And then you have the bands that have have signed and are going like, why? what the hell do we do? Because they mm -hmm. are now property, you know, right. of, of who they've signed to. Um, so I really do appreciate that advice for these bands because like I said, the struggle is real. You've been there, you've done that, you know it, you've, you've lived it. So mm -hmm. I think that that's going to be really valuable to our listeners and to, to your fans as well, because I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure that you have some, some musicians that are absolutely fans of yours <laughs> and are, and are going through this struggle right now, whether you know it or not, there's tons of yeah. people out there that are, that are going through this struggle Backwards as is going to be huge. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, we are so excited, so stoked yeah, to be on the ground floor of this thing because Eric July and Backwards are going to be a household name in a couple of years. And we're going to get to say that we, no, uh, right. we did this. Yeah. In, in a couple we of knew months. We knew him when. No. <laughs> no, well, you know, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be real. I'm trying to keep yeah, it real. Yeah, for sure, real. For sure. But for sure. you do, you're doing such a great job building a brand. Appreciate and, it, man. For man, sure. we, we just really appreciate the fact that you did this with us. And Absolutely. You're hanging yeah. out with us. We just wish you were a little more likable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, right, right. No, but uh, big, big shout out to you guys for for having me on, man. Uh, because you know I do this stuff, I do podcasts and stuff. Right. Uh, as an activist, you know what I mean. So this is right up my my alley, and I'm actually glad you know you you have me on because that's stuff that I don't because I'm buried in politics all this, all the time. I don't get to talk about that business aspect of music and some of the questions that you guys asked. That like you said, there's some musician somewhere that that needs to hear that. Yeah. You know what I mean. And um, uh, much love for you guys for bringing me on and uh, even wanting to just chat about that stuff. And, and so, Eric, uh, just so you know, we're going to take up a little collection here and get you uh, a hat that's respectable and not a Dallas Cowboy hat. You know what I'm <laughs> I'm concerned about you. Oh, man, dude, it's not... I cannot do a video, man. I, I did a live stream on beinglibertarian.com, and I can't get, I can't do it because I'm a hardcore Dallas fan. I'm unapologetic. No you see in the background as well. I got the Mavericks. I got the Mavericks game on behind there, and I got the, I got the, uh, you know, posters and all of this stuff. Uh, but somebody's always giving me crap about it, man. Like, every time, man. That's okay. That, don't worry. I'll get you that 49er hat to be in the mail oh, tomorrow. Okay. I don't know. know. Y'all are hard rivals, man. Yeah, you know how much we we'd have more rings had it not been for y'all. Uh, guys back in the 90s, man. So, you know. <laughs> God, Eric, Eric July backwards. I, I got to tell you, man, one of the coolest conversations we've had in a long time. We have some Absolutely. really cool conversations, but you, sir, are the shit. <laughs> I love you. Appreciate it. Now, I love you. It, now I gotta, right. I'm going to go back and read a book just to feel smart again because <laughs> like, you've um, never read a book in your life aside from Penthouse. Look, look man. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> those are great pictures. I mean, articles. So, you know. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the band is backwards, yes, and it's it backwards, is. all one word, with a Z. Z. And the album is Veracity, March 31st of 2017. 
And it is going to be an amazing album. You need to check it out. Pre-order it. 18 tracks. You know what? There's a bunch of tracks out there just so you can get a taste on YouTube and wherever. Eric, in the meantime, where can people find you, connect with you, and talk to you? Well, I'm uh, everywhere, obviously. Uh, but you can absolutely hit the band up. where you know, Facebook.com slash backwards. Uh, music but the website itself backwardsmusic.com uh, we got all our contact info uh, you guys know i'm active on the social media so twitter uh stuff like that which is eric d july is the twitter uh handle uh my public facebook obviously with the uh what is it facebook.com so it's eric july tx you can you know link up with me if you just want to chat see what i'm about and stuff like that and obviously with being libertarian uh on the facebook being libertarian being libertarian.com we're always live uh, with podcasts and stuff like that. So I'm not not hard to find uh, one way or another. <laughs> no, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> and, and, and thankfully, I, I have a unique enough uh, name, you know, last name being July, that I'm right. the only one that exists. So if you find Eric July, it's me. Well, and, and we're working on uh, we're working on a collaboration here for uh, being brutalitarian. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There it is. You think is. I'm kidding? Right. I love it. I love it. I so, love Eric, it. we always ask our guests, for a little special something at the end of our show. And typically, we talk to a lot of metal artists that are always just metal. And so we ask them to give us their most metal voice and say honest brutality. In anticipation of our conversation, sir, I don't know if you're willing to do it or not, but I was wondering if you would give us an Eric July freestyle. Oh, Eric July freestyle. Okay, yeah, let's uh, let's see if we can uh, uh, do that. Okay, uh, let's see. Old school like the landline. Man's rhymes kind of sort of like a landmine. I'm stone cold, and if I throw it, I'm a landmine. Y'all just need to put a sock in it like mankind. I can't lie, most of these stands, I am not a fan. I ain't playing. I'm applying science like the Iron Man. Defying it, crying the alliance that you lying in. Wind up in the lion's den or maybe in a frying pan. Either way, you getting eight, though. This ain't the lake show, but you shacked in a fool and getting booted like safe mode. Net worth of network, stump you a dang chump, a man punk that don't belong near my command prompt. Fan of it, they amateurs, no need to panda when I'm moving forward like progress, they still like mannequins. Guess that I can answer this, you sort of like philanthropists, cause I'm breaking the mics and y'all paying for the damages. I'm off the scale like hippopotamus weight, and you just off the rails and gotta be fake, it gotta be fake. A lot on the plate is possible, you got in the way. A lot of y'all is trying to be great, but why would you wait? And some would like to try to relate that I got a big ego. But we know that's just a projection and even he know. You see those that call it haters, ain't you really need those that keep your name relevant when you gotta compete. So my pitch perfect like Neo singing a C note. Producer slapping bass like Tito. I'm walking moons like his brother Michael, but I'm clutch like the Jordan one. And you DeAndre shooting a free throw. You be broke, man. <laughs> I love this freestyle stuff, man. This is all right up my alley, man. Honest brutality, man. Honest brutality. Brutalitarian, man. <laughs> Uh, man, no, nah, man, but that that was fun. Uh, <laughs> nah, that was so fun. That was so fun. It's funny. I don't get to. I, I don't get to do that as much as I uh, as I wish I could, man. Um, because it's just metal all the time. It's these days. Everything's metal. It's never. Uh, it's never. Uh, you know the hip hop hop stuff. Unless I'm just doing it, obviously as a, as a side side note. But man, that's always cool to do, and I hope your fans enjoy that one. <laughs> so this whole conversation, the number one vibe I'm getting from you is you be you. Oh, man. And whatever you do in life, you be you. You be the be best, the best you. you can be. Best yep. you can be, man. That That's the my motto. That's what Be Great is all about. If you listen to the lyrics of the song, which is uh, one of our one of our heavier songs, uh, one of our you know biggest songs up, up to date, that's exactly what it is. Uh, and it's funny that a song is on the album called You Are You. And uh, that's th- that's what it's about. I mean, it's about and that's the message that I try to preach to so many different individuals. And, um, you know, because, you know, that's what the philosophy that I adopt is all about, you know, being the best you that you can be no matter, uh, you know, it's going to be people that dislike it, whatever it is, what it is. Just be the best you stop trying to be everybody else. Don't feel like you're 
your your uh, because of who you uh, you know your upbringing that you're automatically tied to a certain outcome and right. stuff like that. Damn. You're in direct control of of your life, man. And uh, that's what it's about. Just get I out you it. get out there, be you, and be great, man. I, <laughs> I say this a lot, but it, this time it's it's absolutely from the heart and from the gut. <laughs> You, you right now are the my favorite guest we've had on this show, dude. Well, he, I would have you, to concur. You, He's you, very sir. Inspiring. We, we very honestly, inspiring. we figured you were going to be really good, but you've even exceed, yeah. exceeded our expectations. It's been a lot of Appreciate fun. It. You're like you should be named Eric Christmas. <laughs> 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 hey man, drop a Christmas, man. That's what it's all about. Christmas in man. July, baby. <laughs> Christmas in July, man. All right. That's awesome. I love it. This is one of the better uh, conversations that I've certainly had, man. So this was fun. This has been Honest Brutality. We love you. We thank you for listening. If you need more Honest Brutality in your life, you can do that at honestbrutality.com or you can check us out at Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all the different socials. You can give us a call. 530-962-0411. And don't forget to listen to our radio shows on Rock Rage Radio. We are there every Saturday with the Honest Brutality Hour at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. Mm-hmm. And on Tuesdays... We have our center stage, and that would be 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern time, where we talk to bands and uh, play their music. So every Tuesday. It's so fun. Oh, I found this new website. It's called... Um, honestbrutality.com it's so awesome (laughs) and you know what they do there the same thing we do here and that's stay metal stay metal You should be avoided. Meanwhile, one of your boys is taking the pause. And you got folks next to you faking the lore. And he giving you money, but you making them more. A couple false promises. Obvious that you ain't getting nothing out of the deal. But you back up for real. And they've been running your city for about 70 years. And you keep on supporting because they say what a bill. You gotta be out to mind. You fall for the okie doke. And it's every time they gotta hold on you. And it's one of the kind. But will it take the real life that they ain't on your side? Let's go ahead and get to the real. Let's cycle through all the bullets.